2007 was the year that I started to invest time into video games. Having two older brothers, my experiences were limited to merely watching and observing them play. At the mature and wise age of seven, however, things changed. Halo 3 and Call of Duty 4 released that year and somehow I was allowed to partake in these extraordinary titles. I could not have had a better introduction to the medium and little did I know that these games would later be held as two of the best of all time. I will talk about Call of Duty 4 another day, but for now I want to focus on Halo 3, which, for me, is the greatest game I have ever played. After Halo 2's wild yet predictable success, Bungie were tasked with creating a game that could somehow improve, but even more importantly innovate on their sequel. Halo 3's development would go on to be a lot more smooth compared to Halo 2, as hundreds of assets that were cut from that game were ready to be implemented into Halo 3. This, along with the introduction of the Xbox 360, gave Bungie more freedom and time to perfect their third instalment. Launching on the 25th of September, Halo 3 grossed $300 million in its first week, had 1 million players online within the first 20 hours and, at the time, set a record for the highest grossing entertainment product within 24 hours of release. Critically, the game has a score of 94 on Metacritic and won Time's Game of the Year. This was one of Halo 3's strongest cards. It appealed to the masses but had the detail and creativity to appeal to critics. In fact, there was only really one major complaint about Halo 3, and that was the story. I won't go into too much detail, however there were some who thought that the narrative lacked depth and the overall campaign was too short. And whilst I agree with those points, on the flip side the surface level story that was told was fantastic, and the game provided plenty of epic and emotional moments. It's also worth noting how superbly the trilogy was concluded especially considering Halo 2's controversial cliffhanger conclusion. And, although Halo 3 is the shortest campaign of the trilogy, it still clocks in at an average of around 8-9 to nine hours. It also avoids shortcomings of previous Halo titles, the level design isn't repetitive like in CE, and the difficulty is fair and balanced unlike Halo 2. However, excluding some excellent scenes and fantastic dialogue, Halo 3's campaign isn't extraordinary or innovative. You could never see it as a masterpiece. The same, however, cannot be said of Halo 3's multiplayer. Taking the baton from Halo 2, the multiplayer in Halo 3 is utterly amazing. Bungie made the decision to divide into social and ranked. In social, players can expect to partake in game modes such as Big Team Battle, Action Sack, or Infection. The objective here is to ensure the playing experience is simply fun. The maps and game modes cater to the casual audience beautifully, and players can simply enjoy Halo's core gameplay and quirks without taking it too seriously. This is amplified by random matchmaking. Your skill does not determine who you play against, meaning matches are frequently varied and unpredictable. Vice versa, however, in ranked, skill is important. If you want to sweat it out here, feel free. Game modes like free-for-all, SWAT, and doubles mean there are plenty of ways to prove your worth. The difference here, however, is the ranking system. You are matched against players of similar rank, so competition is always high. Winning increases your rank whilst losing will probably lead to a broken controller. This was not my place, but the game had a huge competitive scene, which is understandable for a Halo game. 
and with 11 maps at launch, Halo's competitive and casual scenes had a solid base in which to grow. Four DLC map packs would eventually be made available for purchase, bringing the eventual total to 24. However, desiring innovation, Bungie had blessed us with a tool to create our own maps, and bring this number to infinity. Halo CE was the benchmark. Halo 2 brought revolutionary online play. If you're wondering what separates Halo 3 from its rivals and predecessors, it's Forge. As a kid, this absolutely boggled my mind. The idea that I could say, give my team 16 gravity hammers, was simply too good to be true. It's cliche, but the possibilities were utterly endless. Bungie had taken the standard Halo formula and replayability and effectively squared it. You've played Team Slayer, but have you played Team Slayer with needlers only and 50% gravity? How about standard Team Slayer, but this time you're playing it on a map that took some guy in a cave 5 months to agonisingly craft? Or how about just hide and seek with your friends? Because this is what Forge did, bring everyone together for experiences that everyone can enjoy. There are a lot of different reasons as to why we play games, but ultimately the most common reason is that they are fun. Forge allowed players to experience their fun however way they liked it. The user creativity that Bungie gave the players in Hail Tree was not just limited to creating maps however. Theatre was released alongside Forge and it effectively allowed players to view previous games that they had played. You can not only see the action from your camera angle, but any angle you wish, and the mode allowed for the recording of clips and screenshots. Bungie had inadvertently created a sub-community where people would create videos and share photos. Today this tool is nothing special as consoles now have some of these features built in, but in 2007 when few people owned capture cards, it finally allowed people to share great moments that they had with others. This was in conjunction with the rise of YouTube and social media at the time, further widening the community and its outreach. When summarising Halo 3 it's hard to not include the adjective perfect. The campaign is superb, drawing the trilogy to a close whilst being an absolute blast playthrough with new enemies, weapons and vehicles. The multiplayer is a ton of fun, with varying game modes and maps to keep you entertained. Competitively the game is fair and balanced, with the depth to facilitate the hardcore. Forge alongside theatre and improved custom games opened a world of opportunity for creators to experiment and for players to experience the game in a completely new way and share those moments with others. The game oozes polish, like Bungie had been working on delivering such a complete product since 1999. It is a culmination of work since then however, and remains the crown jewel in Bungie's illustrious history. For me, it is the pinnacle of not just the Halo franchise, but gaming as a whole.